Hello, this is part six, covering question five of Questioning Oshalan's Jewish Question by Chaya Heller, which is looking at the anti-Jewish racism in the writings of the Kurdish leader, Abdullah Oshalan. So, question five. How does Ocalan's distorted view of Jewish power lead to Holocaust distortion? So far, I have looked at Ocalan's notion of two levels of Jewish power, one ideological, philosophy, science, art and leftist theory, and one material, money, capitalism and finance. I've also looked at how Ocalan's claims about Jews' cultural and political achievements depict them as possessing class-like or state-like power, capable of making or breaking the revolution. In this section, I address how Ocalan's distorted view of Jewish power is linked to Holocaust distortion. Ocalan's Jews are Janus-faced. They are either statist, anti-statist or capitalist, anti-capitalist. Here I explore yet another binary where Jews are imagined as either self-serving or self-destructive. While self-serving Jews wield financial, religious and political power, self-destructive Jews caused the Holocaust. Ocalan's writing thus enters the realm of Holocaust distortion. Holocaust denial negates historically established facts surrounding the Nazi genocide. As the Holocaust is one of the most well-documented events in history, Holocaust denial is driven not by a lack of information, but by anti-Jewish racism that uses misinformation to cast doubt on the racist motivations that drove the Shoah. Holocaust distortion, however, adds to or changes established facts surrounding the Holocaust. While some distortions reduce the number of six million Jewish people murdered, other distortions argue that concentration camp deaths were caused by circumstantial starvation rather than an explicit policy for mass murder via firing squads or gas chambers. Ocalan's form of Holocaust distortion adds to the established facts surrounding the Holocaust by claiming that Jewish people played a role in causing it. Both in The Sociology of Freedom and in the essay In Commemoration of the Holocaust, Ocalan suggests that Jews themselves caused the Holocaust by antagonising societies through their destructive power and conceit. Yet Ocalan, or his translator, avoid directly using the word cause utilising instead euphemistic terms to articulate Holocaust distortion. Ocalan's Jews are caught in a tragic genocidal cycle they neither understand nor consciously choose. He writes, Jewish accumulators of capital, always aware of their past difficulties, objectively laid the foundations for the genocide that would target the Jewish communities. Ocalan's phrase here, laid the foundations for the genocide, is another euphemism for Jewish action that he believes objectively caused the Holocaust. He also blends distorted Holocaust causality with notions of Jewish wealth and freedom. He writes, We can also learn from the terrible genocide of the Jews that wealth and immaterial prestige based on the poverty and ignorance of others contribute no real value to freedom. Freedom, in a true sense, is the transcendence of the distinction between us and others that is characterised by being available to be shared by everyone. Ocalan hopes that the ec ecumenical we of leftists will learn, in inverted commas, lessons from the, in inverted commas, terrible genocide of the Jews. Yet Ocalan doesn't mean that we study the Holocaust's historically documented causes, but rather hopes that we learn from about the self-destructive consequences of Jewish power. While bearing ultimate causal responsibility for the Holocaust, however, the Jews were not, Ocalan suggests, quote, aware of what was going on and cannot be blamed for it. Ocalan's phrase, not aware of what was going on, 
casts the Holocaust as a result of a euphemistic passive tense goings on, perpetrated by no one in particular, but unknowingly self-inflicted by Jewish people. His implication that Jewish people caused their own annihilation is obviously deeply disrespectful and hurtful and simply indefensible on any factual grounds. The word blame should not appear in the same sentence with Jews, Holocaust or genocide unless it is being unambiguously attributed to the Holocaust's actual perpetrators. Oshelin's Holocaust distortion, however, is not just about the past. It also has a future-oriented dimension. Today, Janus-faced Jews have the power to either liberate the world or give rise to new Hitlers in the future who will kill them. Ochelan writes, If the Jews want to ensure their freedoms, i.e. their wealth, intelligence and power of understanding, they have no choice but to enrich and immaterially strengthen world society in a similar way. Otherwise, they could be persecuted by new Hitlers at any time. In this sense, the liberation of the Jews is only possible if it is intertwined with the liberation and freedom of world society. If a leftist wrote, if Asian Americans want to ensure their wealth, intelligence and power of understanding, they have no choice but to enrich and immaterially strengthen world society in a similar way, to escape future genocidal annihilation, the statement would hopefully sound absurd and racist. If it doesn't read as absurd and racist when Oshelan writes about Jewish people in this way, it is because people are accustomed to the hegemonic sound of anti-Jewish racism that paints all Jews as wielding and abusing great financial and political power. Oshelan has a variety of other euphemisms for Jewish Holocaust causality, asserting that Jews also created the ideologies that contributed to their own genocide. Quote, Nationalism, positivism, religionism had triumphed, but only by simultaneously creating those who perpetrated the genocide of the Jews and committed physical and cultural genocide throughout the world. Oshelan also uses the familiar euphemism of Jewish power itself, being what is behind Jewish suffering. He writes, The spiritual power of the Mosaic faith and the financial power of Judaism is behind its many problems and crises. The rhetorical X is behind Y implies causality, suggesting that X causes Y, attributing the oppression and genocidal disaster inflicted upon Jewish people to their own exploitative power. Elsewhere, Ochelan suggests that Jews were representatives of German nationalism, causally driving it. He writes, The greatest Zionist nationalists were in various respects also the greatest representatives of German nationalism. He, in effect, argues throughout his discussion of the Holocaust that Jewish people persistently produced their own gravediggers. Credible historians, however, know that at no point in history did Jewish people act as representatives of a German nationalism that Hitler took to genocidal extremes. So far, Ochelan's Holocaust distortion focuses on Jewish power as causing the Shoah, 